All the wheat coming down, all the oily tomatoes coming down, fine. Wheat's producing the dough, the tomatoes are getting washed, producing the tomato sauce. Which are all then going into here, which will produce uncooked pizzas, which will go in here and produce cooked pizzas. Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Bonnie Kiwi and welcome back to another Skyblox video. Yes, the game is now called Skyblox. It's no longer called Roblox Skyblock or Skyblock Roblox. It's now just called Skyblox. And you can see all my lovely fruit trees behind me there and also there. Fruit trees are the new addition. I created a video on that yesterday. You can go check that out for all the new info on the update today. However, we're going to be building a brand new automated food farm that's right a food farm crop farm crop farms are so last yesterday and the day before now it's time for all food farms okay these crop farms like this ugh, now it's actually time for food farms because they've increased the price of food and it's actually worth buying now you can see here i've created a singular one which automatically makes bread from source right here from wheat and wheat crop wheat totems all the way to full-on bread in this magical chest in here okay and this is how you make food auto food farms with just one type of food so just from wheat to dough to bread all right but realistically what we want to do is make food that sells for a lot so not just bread we want to make food that sells for a lot so something like if we go to the food processor here excuse me the food processor here we can see all these food types we can eventually make automatically and have automated in a farm now, obviously berry dough would be quite cool that's sells for a lot but you can't automate berries because you know berry bushes can't be automated also avocado toast apple pie lemon bread dough orange cake bar all those new items are out of the question because they also cannot be automated the fruit trees cannot be automated so that kind of leaves us with tomato soup or pizza or carrot cake those are the three things that we can automate it's going to take it's going to take several layers it's going to take a lot of planning but in this video that's the goal for today's video i want to have an automated food farm possibly an auto pizza farm or an auto soup farm or an auto carrot cake farm i'll decide that as we go along we don't need to decide that just yet but what we do need is multiple food processors food processors are the new item which allow you to automatically create whatever recipe you want to you don't you no longer need the cooking table you create the recipe automatically here then it cooks it in the industrial oven then you plop it into a chest for storage you see that bread so what we need is a lot of food processors now i have six crystallized gold here which thanks to my girlfriend she's just chilling here right now hello thank you she um, helped me mine this crystallized gold because it is very difficult to get you have to go to Pafalcourt island you've got to mine all the gold and it's very difficult so what we're going to do is you need three pieces to make a food processor now i've got six pieces which means i can make two more you also need green sticky gears and steel rods and um, i need two more steel rods actually there we go now i can make two more food processors there we go now i'm going to break this singular farm here because i need three i need i think i need three food processors to make the pizza we need a, a food processor to make the wheat and the dough we need a food processor to make the tomatoes into tomato sauce then we'd need another food processor to make the actual pizzas okay i think i'm going to decide to make a pizza farm because the pizza also heals for a whole lot as well so if we have a whole bunch of pizzas if they're, they're planning on adding way more pve items so more mobs and enemies into the game so i think having a pizza farm will be very beneficial so we're gonna have to borrow this food processor at a point i'll, I'll mine for some more crystallized gold and i'll get another one to replace this but i think we're gonna have to borrow this for sec also i don't want to use carrot cake because i don't want to use I've got my carrot farm there. I don't want to take a bottle of the carrot totems from there. So also, I just want to add that in my last video, the update video, if you've seen that, I mentioned that I wasn't sure if there was a way to get fruit tree saplings. It turns out by just just harvesting the fruit on your tree, there is a chance to get a sapling just by doing this, just by grabbing the fruit. That is why I now have three avocado trees down here because I have gotten. Uh, avocado saplings just by harvesting the fruit here. I also got an apple one, but I give that to my girlfriend so she could have an apple tree. Okay, I think I'm going to build my auto pizza farm here. I'll be relocate relocating my trees to an actual like foresty fruit harvesty place eventually once I get a lot more of them. But I think I'm going to build the auto farm here. I just have to think about how we're going to layer it and how it's going to work. So I know we're going to need wheat totems for the dough for the pizza and we're going to need tomato totems and tomato seeds uh, obviously and wheat seeds for so we can actually have all the tomato that we need growing and all the wheat that we need growing. 
And um, yeah, that's all we need, I think. So I'm gonna have to go buy some more tomato totems. Okay, obviously we're gonna need this food processor, so I'm just gonna borrow that right now. Okay, we have all we need in terms of the food processors, because processors, we have three of them. I'm gonna go and buy some more tomato totems though, and some more wheat totems. They're relatively cheap, so it's actually a really good farm like for people that are, aren't, aren't too like extremely rich in the game. This is actually a really good farm to make. So wheat totems, let's buy, Let's buy 30, that'll give us, actually let's buy, let's buy 50, okay? And also tomato totems, let's buy 50 of those as well. Okay, that was like 400k for all the totems. And that will give us plenty to work with. We're also gonna need lots of wheat seeds and tomato seeds, but I don't know exactly how much I need just yet, so I'm gonna wait to, to buy them until we start building the farm. Okay, let's get started on it though, because I, I need to try and figure out how this is going to be laid out, because obviously we want it to be an auto-click method where we can just, at the end, same way I built the, the, the carrot farm, similar to this, where we can just stand at the end and collect all of the carrots, except it will be pizzas. We'll stand at the end and collect all the pizzas. Okay, so this is the basic design of the auto pizza farm, but I forgot that I have to wash the tomatoes. The wheat is fine, wheat doesn't get dirty, I need to put a separator up here as well so it'll stop planting tomatoes there, but that, that'll come later. But the wheat doesn't get dirty, it doesn't get oily on the conveyor belts, but the tomatoes get oily. So I'm going to have to put a washing station in here to wash the tomatoes before they come out and go into the food processor. Now it is actually, the design I think will work as it is. I just have to make sure I wash them. And don't worry about if I've skipped ahead and you haven't seen how it's actually been designed, I will go through it all and we'll, we'll build a second layer above it so you'll see exactly how it's all laid out. You should be able to work it out just from that, from what you see here. But I'll go through another layer as well just in case you've, you're wondering, so don't worry. Okay, so I need to put an industrial washer here to wash these oily tomatoes, which means I also need to put a cool totem here. Okay, and I think I'll just extend the wheat conveyor belt longer then because it can be as long as they want it to be and then they'll go into a food processor and I, I need to try, try and balance it out because obviously it'll take some time for the tomatoes to be washed I need to try and time it so that the wheat and the tomatoes kind of going along at the same time it's not that important but I feel like it's made us a little bit longer nice clean tomatoes okay so we'll put our first food processor here and this, this they don't, you, you don't need coal to power the food processor, so that's good. But this is going to make dough for a pizza. And then I can have another food processor here. So it's, as soon as it comes out the washing station, it goes straight into the food processor and makes tomato sauce. Then the tomato sauce will come out here. I'm just going to extend this grass up. There's a little <laughs> jar of tomato sauce on the end. <laughs> so it works. And basically, the food processor will hold all the ingredients it needs. It'll hold all the tomato. Like, it won't make it until it has three tomatoes in there. Same with the bread, it, the dough, it won't make the dough until it has three pieces of wheat in there. So it should just work once everything's flowing. I also need to block off this front so that nothing kind of falls off here because it's been falling off. See the wheat just fell off there, but we'll get to that. What I need to do first to make sure is that they actually have somewhere to process the pizza at the end. I'm gonna block this off just now because we're losing all the wheat so I can't even test it with all this wheat just kind of falling off. I'm gonna put uh, some glass panes in front there, so that'll force them to fall straight down. Yep, that's better, we don't lose any there. So those three pieces of wheat will make one piece of dough. There we go, we've got tomato sauce coming out of there, we've got dough coming out of there, so that's perfect. Now we need to have another conveyor belt, another food processor that turns the dough and the tomato sauce into uncooked pizza, which we then need to cook, but we'll get to that. I can actually, I'm gonna make this shorter because I'm running out of space here. I'm actually just gonna put this food processor here next to the other one. I know they need washed first, but it won't be too much of an issue. I don't think, it doesn't take that long to wash. They, they made the speed a lot faster, so it should be all right. If it turns out that we're getting way too much dough for ketchup, then we can also, always adjust it. What I need to do now is find a way to combine the wheat and the, to the tomato sauce um, so that it actually comes together to make the pizza. So I think what I need to do is take this down a layer so it dips into the ground so they can fall off the edge and meet. Okay, so we've got a hole for them to drop into. So I'm gonna put a conveyor belt there and a conveyor belt there. And then, so the dough will drop onto there, the tomato sauce will drop onto there, at which point I want them to drop down again. I think, it's getting pretty complicated, but I think it works. Yeah, so the dough just dropped down there, so that does work the way we need it to work. Okay, we have it. 
I've, du I've dug down to get the, the layer down here now. So the dough is going to fall into there. Tomato sauce is going to fall into there. Then we're going to have both of them fall onto this one conveyor belt. Then they're going to go forward into another food processor, which is the last one here. I know it looks kind of a mess right now in the ground and stuff, but don't worry about that. We'll, we'll tidy it up at the end. So I've set that to uncooked pizza now. And the last step we're going to need is for it to go into an industrial oven and cook the pizza. There's the tomato sauce going down. So we have, there we go, an uncooked pizza just flew out and fell to its death. So I would really re recommend if you, when you're building this, build up like a few blocks high and then start building it in the sky. Then you don't have this problem that I'm having where I have to dig under the ground and try and <laughs> create layers underneath my actual ground layer. It's not the best, but it still works. It's just very tricky to place the blocks. So we need an, an industrial oven here now. I'm just gonna borrow this one. Don't forget we need a coal totem as well to power that industrial oven. Okay, have the space. Industrial oven, which is now going to cook the pizza, the uncooked pizza. Will it well once I get a coal totem down there? Okay, I think I need to expand this one more because I need a regular conveyor belt for the coal totem to spawn the coal onto. So put that there, coal totem here, then the industrial oven here. And then all we need at the end is an industrial chest to collect all the delicious fully cooked pizzas like that. And that should be the full, fully automated pizza farm. But obviously we need to we need to fix this. Obviously we need to have all this enclosed so that nothing can fall down. I've got to put a separator here so that the tomatoes don't get planted over here. But we're, we're getting there, we're getting there. I'll have this separator going up the middle, which will work for expanding onto the second layer, which we'll get to once we get the first layer completely all blocked off and working. I need to make sure we actually get pieces at the end of this. I think we will. I think everything is in place now. I do need to block this off because we're losing way too, too much tomatoes and therefore no tomato sauce is getting made. Get my glass blocks and we'll use these to block off the front so we can still see inside and see what's happening. We can even have them coming across here as well as just extra protection to block all of that in. And obviously the more layers we add to this, the faster the crops will be produced, the faster everything will be made and the faster we will get yummy pizza at the end that we can sell to the baker guy when he wants to buy the pizza of course. Clean tomatoes turned into tomato sauce, that fell off there obviously because I need to block that off as well. <laughs> Thank god I was here to spot that, okay let's block that off. Okay, I think that is perfect. Of course we need to put some extra separators at the side here as well just in case anything decides to fall off the edge. Although that's kind of ugly with the grass there. Put the glass blocks along, it looks a bit nicer. And you can now put the blocks right up against the industrial items. You never used to be able to do that and it looked kind of silly having one missed. Although we can't put it around the totem. I may have to put it up on our level and drop it down on a conveyor belt, but it's, you know, I don't think anything will escape from there anyway, so I think we'll be all right. Put the dough going into the final food processor. It's set to pizza, we see we have one dough in there. As soon as the tomato sauce makes its way into there, it will pop out an uncooked pizza. And we have a fully cooked pizza at the end, so we can tell it is working. From source, from growing the crops, from growing the wheat and growing the tomato, right to the very end, we end up with fully cooked pizza. And that is, of course, the goal. It is our, the beginnings of our fully automated pizza farm. There's another one. Hey, fully cooked pizza. And I can grab a little chair to put on the end. Cause you know, when I'm auto clicking, I like to I like to sit here at the end and I can just auto click all the fully cooked pizzas out of there. Obviously we need to do a little bit more to tidy it up because well, actually no, it's, it's, it's working fully. Nothing is escaping. We just need to extend it to have more layers so that it produces all the stuff faster. Because obviously what's slowing it down is the fact that we only have one layer of crops being made at a time. But there is an uncooked pizza going into the oven, which will be popped out as a fully cooked pizza, and then we'll have three in there. There we go, three fully cooked pizzas. So that is it, it, it works, it just fully works. I think I'd maybe want to put the coal totems up a layer and drop them down on a conveyor belt, just because it annoys me having this little gap here. I like to have it fully closed off, but that's something I can I can change at a later date. It doesn't, the farm works. That's the most important part. We don't lose any crops. We don't lose anything. It just works. So I'm going to go and build a second layer now, just because obviously I rushed through that first, because I wanted to make sure I had it working first before I actually went ahead with the video. 
So now that it, I know that it fully works, I'm going to make another layer so you can actually see how a second layer is made, or how every layer is made even. Okay, just like that, and obviously we need to expand over this side as well. Oh, I need to chop down this avocado tree, it's getting in the way. So like with every farm I do, this is the kind of generic farm design that I do now with the sprinklers and the, the, the water catchers. When I'm building a layer, you'll see everything that we actually need, so don't worry if I'm just if you think that you're lost right now. But make sure that when you go up a different layer, you go up four blocks high, because that's how much you need to clear uh, the level of the totems. But how wide the farm is, is basically one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks that way. One, two, three, four, five, six blocks that way. Seven by six. And I'll leave a gap in the middle so that it's just a bit cleaner. And because also we're going to travel up and down, we need ladders in the middle here to travel up and down like that. So we can go up and I'll take this glass block out of the middle just so we have a way to get up and down. Now we take our hole and go into here. So we'll one, two, three, then draw a square like this. And another square like this. This bit in the middle is going to be a sprinkler in here. You can decide to, you know, hit that with the hole or not. Um, I'm leaving it blank just now, just so you can see that's where the sprinkler goes. Then, obviously, follow the same pattern underneath. Go over here. I've got three blocks in the middle that are unused. And then, one, two, three, like this, a block. And another block like that. Take the tomato seeds. Make sure you keep them on the same side. Otherwise, they'll be going into the wrong processors. But that is the tomato seeds. And the wheat seeds like this. And in the middle there needs to go a sprinkler. There we go, sprinklers. Put one there, one there, one there and one there. And then we need the water catchers to actually give water to the sprinklers like this. Three, oh I've run out, but there'll be another one here as well. I need to go and craft another one. Now, if you can't afford to make all like all of this stuff, don't worry, one water catcher in the middle there would be enough to feed water to both of them. Um, but I just prefer to have one water catcher per sprinkler, and that way they're just guaranteed to get water faster, therefore the crops will grow faster. And before I put the conveyor belts and totems down there, I'm actually, gonna, see, the one, the one water catcher actually gave water to both of them there, so one will be enough, but I just like to have two, and just because it's cleaner and it, um, it's more in sync. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> so I can put in our water catcher here. Um, I'm very, everything has to be symmetrical when I build, otherwise it just, my OCD just goes crazy. So I'm gonna take these glass panes and extend this up. Make sure you're always extending. Okay, so conveyor belts, you're gonna to need to put these along the front for every totem you're gonna have. So it's six on each side, like this. Again, don't worry if you can't afford all those totems, just you make what you can afford and at the time you can always expand it later. I'll grab my wheat totems. And my tomato totems are there. So tomato totems there. Again, they would this would still work with like three. Like a totem can grab like three from all around it, but just having the more totems means it can push more. It can lift more and push more faster. So the more totems you have, the faster your farm will work. The six wheat totems there. And then I like I said, I always put a glass pane in front of the conveyor belts just so that the crop can't take any weird roll or bounce it's going to if it does it's going to hit the glass pane and it's going to fall straight down so just like that and then we take the glass blocks and then uh, just extend the front of it and that is it just keep them going up so that nothing can escape because obviously the higher up you go then the gravity comes into play it's going to it's going to fall from a very high height and then it starts taking awkward bounces so you want to make sure there's nowhere for the crops to escape because if you're losing crops then you're losing it's going to take longer to, to produce the final product. See, oh, my wheat just fell off the end there because I obviously need to block off this end as well. <laughs> so if this if this end was blocked off there, that would be impossible because it would it would hit off the glass and fall back onto the conveyor belt. So it's just little things like that, which obviously you'll discover as you go higher up that you need to block off certain areas so that it can't escape. And I'll extend it around the sides like this, just to kind of close it off, just so that nothing can get in or out. All the wheat coming down, all the oily tomatoes coming down, fine. The wheat's producing the dough, the tomatoes are getting washed, producing the tomato sauce, which are all then going into here, which will produce uncooked pizzas, which will go in here and produce cooked pizzas. And we've made 24 pizzas, 24 fully cooked pizzas, automated, while we were, you could say AFK, extending our farm so we know it fully works and that oily tomato wouldn't have fell there if I'd blocked this off <laughs> but yeah that's why you need to block areas off so they can't fall like that and of course I need to block this off as well so that is our fully automated pizza farm you can see it fully works the oily tomatoes fall down there the wheat falls down there they 
travel forward to the respected places where they need to go. That That's actually great timing where I've placed that. They go, the tomatoes got washed and come out roughly the same time as the, the dough comes out of there, or the wheat comes out into there to come into the dough and then the tomato sauce. And uh, yeah, I think that all works pretty well. As you can see, we've made 19 pizzas uh, while we've just been just been building it, yeah. So obviously if I leave that running and just hit set up an auto clicker here, sit here, set up an auto clicker, I'll be collecting fully cooked pizzas, which I can sell to the baker. And um, while I was completely AFK, I'll have made a fortune by the time he's asking for pizzas because they've made food uh, a lot. You can sell them for a lot more now. That was in the latest update where food actually sells for a lot more. So it's worth making things like this. That's why they added in the food processor. So we could make things like this. Now this took three food processors and a washing station <laughs> and an oven to make happen. But once you can reach the stage where you have plenty of money or if you just grind for all the items that need this, then this will make you an absolute fortune. But yeah, that's it. The fully automated pizza farm. If you like this video, please leave a big massive thumbs up and subscribe if you're brand new and turn on notifications. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.